Um, look, I, I think this is a really poignant session and a great way to end this conference. Um, uh, the theme of the session is living regionally and building a career, which is, uh, I guess, very specific to your experience as a producer. Um, look, I've not had a career that's had any regional basis, but I did grow up in Crescent Head, which is on the mid-north coast, so I understand what it's like to have parents that, you know, tra travel down to the city quite a, a lot for work, so I can see that from my youth. Um, but as I move through here, so I'm, I'm chatting today to um, Lois Randall. Um, Lois is a, a brilliant producer and um, her program, The Gods of Wheat Street, I think is brilliant. So lo great to chat to you, Lois. Um, I've got David next, David Bradbury. Um, David's a documentary maker and um, uh, David, how many years experience do you have? Ooh. It's like 35 years experience, 25 films, is that it? Did I get it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So David's got a lot to offer, um, a very obviously senior and um, very experienced practitioner in the area. Um, Dana Banana. Hi. <laughs> I was just saying before, me. Dana, Dana. <laughs> um, so Dana, um, no. you've had a reality TV background, I right? have. I haven't updated my IMDb in three <laughs> years. But I think that's a sign that I've been working too hard. Yeah, yeah. So living, living here regionally, but um, working, I guess, internationally and on very large scale productions. Um, and then last of all, Darius. So Darius um, Thanks, spent Kate. 10 years in Melbourne, um, starting his career there, and he's since moved back to the Byron area. Um, and you've been here, back here, a couple of years now, yeah, and just sort of learning how to navigate his career based here now. So everyone's coming from quite a different perspective. Um, but the one thing I just want to highlight here is... Um, what was it? I wrote it down. So David, when I called David um, the other day just to have a chat and say hi, he was telling me that he was coming back from the Gold Coast, was it? Yep, Brisbane, Brisbane. Brisbane. And he'd been up to see a band, a musician. Um, and this particular musician has composed for a lot of David's work. Mm -hmm. And we just started riffing about how these relationships are extremely important and living regionally is all about relationships and having ongoing continuous relationships. So I was really interested to hear about David's story and perhaps you can give us a bit of a, um, a bit more of a, an elaboration on that relationship. But this is an ongoing relationship that David, um, you know, goes and sees him perform quite regularly and he comes and visits you over quite an extended period of time. Well, he's based in uh, Paris with his group Paris Combo and his wife and two kids. Here is... Um Grew up in Melbourne, but uh, then went, saw you know, that he wanted a bigger melting pot and went to uh, to Paris, a classic music trained, and uh, basically operates from there. And uh, yeah, I was introduced to him by my editor, Andrew Aristides, when we were making My Asian Heart, and we made contact with him, and it basically, it just went from that. And I think it's what was underlined yesterday at the uh, in the f in the first uh, forum with the <coughs> feature producers, including yourself, Chloe. That it's a lot of it's got to do with with the relationships and building relationships and uh, and working with the same people because you have a shorthand of language and a trust that's worked out. Um, you know, and each film, you go deeper with that that uh, person and you. You, you find that it's sort of, you get to the same result a lot quicker because you understand the other person and, and what they have to offer and so on. For me, it was quite daunting but exciting when I made The Crater uh, two, three years ago for the ABC because I got a chance to work with a, a small, scaled-down Hollywood uh, feature crew with um, a sort of trucks of lights and dollies and all those sort of things and uh, to recreate war down uh, south of, of, of Sydney at Camden and we were recreating tropical heat 40 degrees at night time 50 miles north of Saigon down uh, south in, in where it was minus 7 or 7 degrees centigrade at night time <coughs> and uh, had challenges of people, the, the Vietnamese communist soldiers coming across the open paddock breathing uh, fumes like you know do that you wouldn't be getting in a tropical situation so that came as a result of a relationship that I had with a an Australian DAP that I, I shot some clips with midnight oil and uh, and other stuff 35 years ago when I first started out and he'd 
moved to the United States, but I'd always kept contact with, with Rob, and when I got the chance to direct drama after all these years, it was that relationship that I pulled out uh, and uh, had his help to be able to create something that I was feeling you know, nervous but excited about, not having directed any real drama before, except for one small little um, episode. So, um, David, when we were speaking, you were um, telling me about some of the challenges that you're currently facing, and um, one in particular we were talking about relationships with networks. So can you please um, give us a bit of a, an example of what, what you're feeling at the moment in terms of your relationship with the network uh, from a challenge perspective? <laughs> well, the truth of it is, if you get down to the bare bones of it, I'm surviving on the old age pension at the moment of $235 a fortnight. And uh, that's because all the um, efforts that I've put into trying to get ABC or SBS to come with, I, I pitched to them two years ago a film about my own 27-year-old son's addiction uh, with, with drugs as a result of his mental illness, depression and OCD. And it's quite a story and very close to me and one that sort of at times, having m not put the camera down, in most instances of my filmmaking career, uh, I found that it was too close. I had to obviously put the camera down and, and not do it. But the ABC had dropped um, Mental As Anything or the Mental Health Week after doing it for two weeks, uh, two years in a row. And uh, there was no longer a slot for uh, that there. And they weren't interested in a one-off documentary. I've, uh, I've been to Iraq and risked my neck going to Baghdad and Basra and Fallujah, places that have now since fallen to ISIS, but the ABC and SBS weren't interested in that either. Uh, I guess, uh, though, what, what, do you, what are you finding that's particularly the challenge? Because we were talking about, you know, relationships with commissioners. So what? So what's hard for you? I think they change a lot, and uh, I think they feel a little bit threatened by someone, maybe. And also I think that the dumbing down of the audiences, where they're going for bums on seats, rather than living up to the charter of what I grew up with at the ABC, which was you know, living up to the charter of the ABC, which was to putting on what you couldn't find on free to air or laid up a cable TV. The ABC now is driven by a, a neoliberal sort of philosophy. It's managed by business managers and uh, people with marketing degrees rather than people that for my generation that uh, when I first entered the ABC 40 years ago and for a good part of my career was program makers who knew what the challenges were in making programs and they came from a solid program making basis, be it in radio or television and, uh, and they then gravitated to that spot of management. That's all gone out the window post um, David Hill and, and so on and the whole notion that the ABC has got to justify its presence and it's also a political threat to, um, to Canberra, be it the Labor Party or the Liberal Country National Party there and the funding of it's gone back and back and so you find I think the ABC is top heavy with management and legal and, and business and, man and uh, uh, arts de um, business management and um, uh, degrees and marketing and that's where their emphasis is rather, rather than sort of you know, going for programming. Um, might move on to you now, Lois. Uh, Lois, what's your experience with pitching projects and those relationships? Um, I guess it's been it's been mixed. Um, it, there has been a lot of change, um, and but generally, um, I think the key for me, just in the context of this discussion, as a regionally based producer, is that. Um, I have to. Sp I spend a lot of money on airfares because it's critical to make those build those relationships face to face. Once you've established the relationship, then you can Skype or telephone or email. But for those first um, opportunities to pitch concepts, it's just absolutely has to be face to face. And how often so would you fly down to? Is it Sydney that you're going to? Uh, or? Mainly, yeah. Um, and also Brisbane. I've recently just got a. I've got a new project that's starting. That's very Queensland, and it's um, got a lot of support from Screen Queensland. So I've been doing meetings there as well. Um, so I, I just at every opportunity I, I go and um, to try. If you had to estimate, how many would you go once a month or? Yeah, probably. Yep. 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 
Um, I've had a really positive um, experience recently. I'm, I'm about to go into pre-production on a children's television series. It's, it's co-commissioned by NITV and ABC with a Disney pre-sale as well, so it's quite um, unique. It's got three windows rolling out one after the other. And um, which was necessary for the financing because NITV <coughs> is the primary commissioning partner and they don't have a lot of money. Um, so I've had quite a lot of people to have meetings with, um, but I've, um, I've found that the current, this, it's a children's series, so I'm working with the children's department in the ABC and um, NITV and it's been a really positive collaboration working with those commissioning editors. And is Disney here local or are you in dealing with it? Okay, Sydney, yep. yep. Um, we, in that project, we also have an international partner, which is a Canadian um, distributor uh, with Re for Rest of World. Mm -hmm. And um, that's been interesting because that is a, a relationship that I've had to build on the telephone. Um, so I've done, I've done a lot of phone calls at sort of two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> You're working to their time, yeah. right? Yeah. And, um, and really invested in getting to know the people first and talking and getting their feedback and then really sort of building that relationship. So, um, so Dana, um, uh, we were talking about, so you've moved here in the last two years, is that right? Yep, and you've got young children. I do, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. yes. So, and <laughs> why did you choose to move to um, this <coughs> area? Um, I'd been a producer for 15 years. I did seven years in Los Angeles, Hollywood. Holy crazy wood. I felt really normal in Hollywood. It was awesome. Um, and, um, and then I came home because I was pregnant. Because if you have a baby in America, FYI, it's about 100 grand. So I uh, came home and kept working because being a freelance producer, you don't get any benefits of um, maternity leave or anything like that. And I just found the Sydney grind really hard with two kids. So I was finishing work at 8, 9 o'clock at night. Um, if anyone knows Sophie Zacharou, um, actually one day I put her wife down as the person to pick up my kid from school, but I forgot to tell her. And one day I was in a screening at Channel 9 and they couldn't get on to me. And they called Kylie and said, can you come and pick up these children? And Kylie had never met my children, so <laughs> that was embarrassing. But I guess the point being is... Um, it just got all very difficult trying to be a TV producer in Sydney and hold up my fabulous life um, and be a mother. So came here and now I'm just trying to do exactly the same thing from home or from the roadhouse, a.k.a. rude house, don't we all agree? Um, so, yeah, but most I still work just as hard, really. I just get to pick and choose my hours a bit more because I'm working from home. And um, I totally agree with what everyone's saying about relationships are very important. There's people I met in this room last year who I have been working with here in Byron Bay now for a year. I see a few faces now. Sorry I don't pay you very much. That's coming. That's coming. Um, but uh, relationships are very important. And also, as Lois said, you know, when you get these runs on the board, um, you know, you can have these fabulously collaborative experiences with networks and then the next show you do, you have a horrific experience where they treat you like dirt and, and you know, you want to cry yourself to sleep every night too. So you've just got to keep on getting back up. So I think you gave me an estimate of how, um, how many months of the year you're in Sydney and, and at this point, how many, how many is that? <sighs> I would say I work almost half the year in Sydney. and so that's six out of the 12, yep. You know, I try and negotiate a four-day, four twelves in Sydney and, um, or uh, I will just go down for meetings or I'll just go down for screenings. So every job's different. I do about, I don't know, maybe 10 shows a year on average. And how do you so manage that with the kids? Who, who's uh, who's there? Well, <laughs> I'm lucky my husband's an editor. He's only my first husband, though. Um, so, you know, things are going quite well there for now. He's quite tolerant of my television career. But so he's on The Voice right now, for example. So I'm the stay-at-home mum with also casting two TV shows as we speak. And, um, and then we swap over and I'll go to Sydney and pretend I'm still, like, Sex in the City single with all my girlfriends and he has to... Change nappies. I can't wait. July 5. <laughs> okay, Darius. So how, how are you finding it? What's, um, what's causing you worries or concerns at the moment and what, what problems are you sort of yeah, seeing? The agony couch. 